We talked at the top of the program about the issue we're discussing today is federal spending and the debt. And for that viewer watching who watched this program over the 21 years we've been on, we have covered this subject often because it is, in my opinion, the most serious problem this, this country is facing. So give us some sense today. Now, we're taping this uh, first part of May in 2011, so a lot of things are going to change before this airs. But give us some sense of where we are with the government spending and the debt today. Well, we're going to be in the same place for a long time. We're at a $1.6 trillion deficit. Uh, we're borrowing about 40 cents on the dollar to, to fund the government. Uh, we have three programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, that by themselves in about 20, 30 years will consume the entirety of the federal budget. That means that there is nothing there for veterans spend, spending. There is nothing there for defense. Uh, there is nothing there for any other legitimate government function unless we double taxes. Uh, and we have, a, at this point, we have a $14 uh, trillion dollar national debt. There's a debate going on as to how and whether that should be increased. Uh, but we have a serious fiscal crisis, and the America is neither going to look like the way it has over the last couple of generations in, for, at a time when my kids grow up. Uh, if we don't get this under control. All right, now you, you have absolutely uh, identified the problem. However, that viewer out there and the ones who watch our program, I'm telling you, are the most intelligent people around. That I can assure you, sure. Russell, so keep that in mind. Nevertheless, that. intelligent as they are, they have differing opinions about what should be done. Now, you mentioned two things that I want to emphasize. Number one, today we are borrowing of all the $3.6 trillion we spend a year at the federal level, we're borrowing 40 cents out of every dollar from somebody, correct? Sure. That's unsustainable. Do we agree with that? We do. Okay, now, you said in order to solve that problem, though, you'd have to double taxes. Well, I don't think the Heritage Foundation is proposing to double taxes, no, are you? Absolutely not. That's, that's the impact of our current situation if we don't do anything. Now, the way to deal with this is that spending is the problem. If you look at where we have been uh, as a percentage of GDP, spending is, is, is much higher than the historical average. Uh, a congressman from Texas, Jeb Henselling, has had a constitutional amendment to limit it to 20 percent of GDP, which is the post-World War II historical average. Uh, if we could take steps to get it down to that level, uh, we would balance the budget eventually, uh, we would promote economic growth, and we would avoid tax increases. Okay, well that's all well and good, but if I am on MSNBC, I would tell you this, is that the problem isn't spending. The problem is we are not taxing the rich enough for us, and by golly, we need to double the taxes or at least triple the taxes on the rich, and we can balance the budget that way because you cannot take money away from old folks. I would just respond to that and say I've never gotten a job from a poor person. The people who give jobs in America that promote economic growth, that open businesses, that are entrepreneurs, often make a lot of money, and they put it back into the economy. But beyond that, what Rich also, when, when liberals won't talk about wanting to tax uh, people who are rich, they're also talking about small businesses that file as, as, as C corporations or whatnot. Uh, and, you know, that is the last thing you want to do in a time of economic growth, uh, even if you're looking at just for whether it's effective or not. I personally don't believe that we should be, in any case, raising taxes even if people could absorb more of their yeah, fair but, share. Yeah, but that, that sounds really good, Russ. That's just great. But, you know, that argument might have washed in the past, but look, we've got, not only do we have a lot of people making a lot of money, let's just take Wall Street as a bad example. Sure. About half of those folks, by some people's estimation, are criminals who are not behind bars yet. So you're saying these folks are not creating jobs. The financial sector up there, the Goldman Sachs is the world, they're not creating jobs. All they're doing is making fees and putting together stupid mortgages and all that kind of stuff. And that doesn't seem like that creates any wealth in the country. Well, you certainly pointed to a situation where we have a lot of crony capitalism going on, and that's certainly not good either. Uh, we have Wall Street taking bailouts. Uh, we have uh, big, big firms that are saying, you know, we need subsidies, and those subsidies come on the backs of people who are paying taxes across the country. That is certainly not good.